Hey, I'm Becca with The Happy Ever Crafter and I am so excited about this video because I have finally set up this dream box and I'm here to give you a tour of everything inside of it. I'm gonna flip my camera in just a second and take you on a tour of absolutely everything inside of here. But before I do, I just have a couple things I need to say. Number one, if you haven't seen my other dream box video, I'm gonna link to it at the end of this one because in that one, I walk through the process of receiving it, setting it up, all that stuff, and answering a bunch of the questions that I know you're gonna have. In this video, I actually just wanna show you exactly what's inside of it. Number two is that Create Room, the makers of this dream box, didn't pay me to make this video, but they did send this to me for free. So although it's sort of sponsored, I wanna make it really clear that I would not be reviewing this product if I didn't wholeheartedly think that it's super awesome. And number three, Create Room also gave me a $100 discount if you want to buy one of these things. So I'm gonna put it down in the links below. There's a link for Americans and Canadians. And um, yeah, I'm also gonna link to most of the art supplies that I talk about in this video. So everything you're gonna be wondering about is down below in the links. Okay, and lastly, before I can actually show you how I set all of this up, you need a little bit of a backstory. If you've seen a dream box before, you might have seen someone's like really fancy, perfectly color-coded, uh, you know, creatively laid out dream box. And that's what I had seen too. So there are a lot of people who receive a dream box and then do lots of planning to figure out exactly where they wanna put everything, you know, buy their own fancy bins or put some colored liners in them or do all these creative things. And in my head, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted it to be really perfect and uh, you know, completely customized to me. But when I received this and realized how many compartments there were and how many art supplies I had once I laid them all out, it was really, really overwhelming. So I decided to actually take Create Rooms, uh, you know, their like prescribed plan on where to put the bins and where to put all the shelves. And I highly recommend that if you buy one of these, that you do that too. So my plan is that I've done it all the prescribed way at the beginning. And then over time, I'm gonna start to you know move things around and get a little more creative with it. But I feel like that's the best option for me so that I'm not completely paralyzed and it didn't stop me from filling it up. My background is in interior design. And so when they sent me an elevation drawing of what it should look like, obviously I printed it out and I started doodling on it. So basically first I made an inventory list of all the stuff I had. And then I just decided logistically for me working at this desk, I wanted to have the whole left side for pens because I have a lot of pens. And then I wanted the whole right side to be more for paint stuff. So it would be really easy for me to differentiate. If I wanted to draw, I would go to the left. And if I wanted to paint, I would go to the right. And then looking at the middle, it had all those bigger drawers that made sense for all of my paper collection. Of course, as I actually started to set this thing up, it looked a little bit different than my original plan. So now I wanna take my camera and flip it and then just walk you around and show you every little nook and cranny of this thing. So this is the whole dream box. It takes up that, basically that whole wall of my office. I have some other shelves here, but um, it takes up basically that whole wall and then that's my computer desk beside it. So I've got sort of like my workspace where I work on my computer and then I can quickly pivot and work here and do my art stuff, which is really, really nice. So here's a full view of the whole thing. And now I just wanna kind of walk you through each part. So on this, like I said at the beginning, um, this left side I wanted to be more of my pens, and then the right side I wanted to be more paint stuff. So this whole left side basically is all pen stuff. I've got these different jars. These um, are just actually the cases that the food no suitcase come in when you order them in bulk and I just turn them around so you don't see those labels um, but one of the questions I get all the time is if these bins come with the dream box and yeah the they do these are you know standard with the dream box so all of those compartments you don't have to go and buy yourself the only things that I've added to this are the jars that I just showed you and then some of these other jars down here, these are just from the dollar store. Um, and I like the way they look in there, but you could totally just use, you know, the things that they've provided. These little jars are provided by Dreambox as well. So, um, okay, so I've got some different pens in here. These are uh, graphic pens, they're like paint pens. And then I've got some Zebra Mild Liner brushes. Again, I'll link to these supplies all down below. 
And then uh, these rods come with it as well. So I filled this up with some washi tape and then I've got um, some of the tapes that I use for my bigger signage jobs. Usually I have packing tape here, some custom Happy Ever Crafter packing tape, but I'm out of it right now. Then in these bins, I've used these as sort of like catch-all bins for some messy stuff. So chalks and pastels, and then just like these 500 pencil sharpeners I have because I use these for my workshop kits. And then in those built-in holes, I've got my Micron pens sorted by size. Under there, I have just some more pen jars. Um, I have my white pens, I've got pencils. These are Zebra uh, Funwari pens. And then this jar is full of pointed pen holders. Under there, I have, again, just some more dollar store bins. These are um, the jars that I put in the middle of the tables at my workshop. So they have just like a hodgepodge of different types of pens people can try. And a couple different sorted ones down here again. These are like Sharpie pens. These are some more white pens and Sharpie pens. These are the Tombow um, Twin Tones and then some more colored Sharpies. And then that last one I actually haven't filled. Again, one of the questions that I've gotten about this is whether this whole dream box can hold all of my art supplies. And the answer is actually, um, I had to buy some more art supplies. I bought some more Tombos to put into that middle part, which I'll talk about in a minute, but um, I even have some empty spots, like that's empty. These are pretty empty here at the bottom and same thing on this side. Uh, I have some other shelves in my studio, but these are more for like books and bigger things that I wouldn't put in there anyway. So it fits a ton of art supplies. And let me tell you, I have a lot. So I wouldn't worry about that. Moving on up here, I have paint pens. Basically this whole section is paint pens and um, chalk pens. So these are what I use for big window jobs. I've got Posca's. I've got Molotow's. I've got Sharpies. Um, I have, these are more Posca's. These are Bistro chalk pens, all different sizes. Um, and then I have, these are Casa chalk pens and these are Versa chalk, chalk pens. So lots of chalk pens and paint pens in that whole section. This is sort of, um, some of the stuff that I use in my workshop kits. So I've got like a bulk of this color pen. I always put those in my kits. I've got some Tombow Twin Tones in there, lots of them. Um, and then down here, this is sort of the spot that I don't want people to see. Um, although this dream box makes it look organized, these are actually just drawers of pens I haven't organized. <laughs> you know, when you have this many pens, sometimes you don't keep them all organized. I will say though, these are all brush pens. These are all fine liner pens. These are all like Crayola and kid stuff that I can give to kids who come over. Um, and same thing down here, some more kids pens. And then in the bottom drawers here, I've got um, some labels and stuff. I use those for workshops as well. And then again, these are pretty empty. I've got a little bit of more tape down here, but that's it. So still room to fill. And then these next bins, I really liked these smaller sizes of bins that go down that middle portion there. Um, I've just filled them with more pens. So I've got the Artline sticks in here. I have the Tombow Fudonosuke colored pens. I have mild liners, zebra mild liners. These are like the best highlighters. Um, these are Archer and Olive Acrylograph paint pens. I've got a whole bin of pencils, some oblique um, pointed pen holders, some straight pointed pen holders. This is full of nibs. Um, this is more like black fine liner pens. These are charcoal and chalk pencils that I use for signage jobs. These are more, um, uh, just colored fine liners and then another bin of miscellaneous pencils and now moving on to this middle part 
again, I said uh, in the intro that this is where I decided to put paper. And then I ordered these two. These are add-ons to the original Dream Box. These are called the Tool Cubbies and they're perfect for pens. So that's like, I'm so proud of that middle part. It's all color coded, it's beautiful. Um, and just for people to know, I don't use that many of these Tombow pens myself. These are the pens that I use for workshops as well. So moving into this section, these bins are all full of paper. So I've got Rhodian like smaller notebooks. These are blank notebooks. These are grid notebooks. And then I've got um, tracing paper and marker paper in these ones and watercolor paper in these ones. So it's all really easy for me to find. It didn't used to be that way in my old studio. So I'm loving it so far. And then on this side, I have blank cards, um, stickers, scrapbooking paper. This has um, the foil for my mink machine, which is right here. If you don't know what a mink machine is, it's sort of like a laminator, um, but it makes digital foil stick to it. So like silver, gold, beautiful stuff. In here I have some of my workbooks. These are my floral courses and my calligraphy courses. And then just some blank uh, cardstock. And then again, under there I have my mink machine and this is a bunch of blank journals. Now moving on to the more paint related side, you'll notice that um, although I planned for this all to be paint stuff, it sort of turned out a little bit differently because I don't do as much painting. I still have a lot more pens than paint stuff. So I had a bit of pen overflow happen over here. So up here I have metallic brush pens. These are the Karen metallic pens. These are the Karen regular pens. And these are rendering markers that I had from university. And then I've got the Tombow um, ABT Pro pens. Those are alcohol-based versions of the, the ones I have in here. This is a whole bin of Tombow Food and Osukes, my number one favorite pen. And um, I have this many because I put them in my workshop kits again. These are um, Kelly Creates brush pens. And then this is water brush pen. So like the Pentel Aquash where you fill it up with water and you can paint with it. So we are starting to get a little bit more paint related, but a couple other things in here before that, I've got this bin full of um, embossing powders and embossing fluid. If you've never seen how to emboss, I have a video on that. It's super fun. Um, so this is embossing stuff and stamping stuff. Then I've got all my inks for my pointed pen in here. Um, India ink, Sumi ink, stuff like that. This is just more blank cards. I just thought they were pretty and they looked nice in a bin like that. And then we finally get into paint stuff. So in here I have acrylic paints, gouache paints, and watercolor paints all separated. Dreambox sends these little separator pieces, which is really nice. Then I've got my, um, Dr. P.H. Martin's liquids here. So Bombay ink and Hydrus ink. And then I've got some fluid acrylics in here. And then I have liquid watercolors, which are these eco lines. I love these. In here, I have more watercolor and gouache paints. And then this is um, Fine Tech pigments. These are for making your own pigmented um, inks for pointed pen super recommend those if you want to make your own inks here I have more watercolor tubes um, this is palettes and some more watercolor um, pans it's so like my metallic pans and stuff like that then I have more palettes brushes brushes this is weird um, these are napkins I use these for my workshops they're just pretty and uh, they fit perfectly in this drawer so they're there and then this is where we get into more like you know I had room and I just kind of filled these drawers up so this is with um, some like loose cardstock and envelopes and stuff that I use for Instagram videos this is pencil cases and things like that and then um, my glue gun and heat gun and then just like random stuff so more workbooks in there and I'm pretty sure this last one's empty yeah it's got like little canvases in it um, but I've got these brushes and then this drawer is, um, what's it called? Masking fluid. 
So sort of a hodgepodge at the bottom there, but the, the top is mostly pens and paints again. And then in here, I've got more acrylic paint, watercolor pans, acrylic paint, acrylic paint and um, fixative, acrylic paint, and then the bottom is empty, except for, I thought this was genius, I used one of the rods for paper towel. And I love having that down there on the bottom because I always need paper towel in my studio. I can never find any, and it's also not pretty, so it kind of hides in that bottom corner. <laughs> so there you have it. That's the whole dream box. And oh, under here, just some more bins of things where I can hide like plain paper, nothing that looks super pretty. Again, I think over time I'll make this look prettier. I'll add some different bins. But right now I'm pretty happy with the way this, uh, this looks. Okay, that was a lot. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing that as much as I enjoyed filling it out and using it. Um, I just wanna mention one more time that of course I have another video about this and it answers a lot of the logistics questions like how this works, how it folds up, how it opens up how it works when you receive it, because obviously it's a very big package, um, and whether or not it's worth it. I, spoiler alert, the answer is yes, but lots more info in that video. So I'm gonna link to that next. I'm also gonna do an FAQ video answering your questions about this. So if you have questions, either leave them below on this video or leave them below on the next video you're about to watch, and I'm gonna try and answer them for you. So hopefully this can help if you're thinking about buying a dream box. If not, just enjoy seeing this because it's amazing. And uh, yeah, as always, make sure you're subscribed to the channel because I put out two new videos every single week and I'll see you next time.